Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today we're looking at front discs and pads on a Ford Transit Custom. Now this is my personal van. Um, basically a little bit of a vibration through the steering wheel and the braking, which has got worse over time. So yeah, if you check this out. Yeah, you can see that. <laughs> it's quite bad, isn't it? <laughs> yes, Martin, it is. As you can see, it's not a very pleasant thing. So yeah, finally got around to doing it. So um, check out the description. I put all the tools and tightening torques and procedures down in the down in the comments. Um, and yeah, I'll tell you as we go along. It's a bit of a long video, guys, but I really felt that we needed to get it all in. So yeah, bear with me, take a look, and yeah, we'll go through it. Right then guys, so here's all my tools laid out. Um, welcome to, feel free to pause and have a little look, but uh, yeah. So first thing, we're gonna take the wheel off. Um, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make you wait and watch me do this, but uh, I sh I'll skip forward in a sec, so there we go. Now, once we got the wheel off, we're gonna have to disassemble the caliper first. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn the steering wheel on a lock to make it a bit easier to get to. And then we're gonna remove the lower 15 mil locking bolt for the caliper. Now the slider will spin, so take a 21 mil spanner and obviously your 15 and unwind the bolt. And you can just wind that out with your hands once you've slackened it. So yeah. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the pad sensor wire, which obviously warns you on the dash when your pads get low. So we're gonna unplug him and then obviously let him dangle. Um, there is a little boot, so we we'll just hook him out of there. Now I got a screwdriver here and I'm obviously pulling the caliper to push the pistons back. Then I'm just gonna make room between the pad and the disc and prise the pistons back into the caliper. Obviously I'm not worried about damaging the pad because I'm putting new pads and discs on this. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do now is obviously I'm gonna remove the brake pads and then the next thing we're going to do is remove the caliper. Now, obviously, I don't need to remove the top bolt. I can just slide the slider straight out and then just let it dangle. You can cable tie it up, but it's a straight hose. It's not going to hurt to let it dangle. So now I'm going to undo the carrier bolts. So there's two of them and there are 21 as well. So remove the carrier and that's pretty much it. That's the easy bit done. So now we're going to straighten the steering out and start disassembling the hub. So first thing we're going to do is remove the split pin that's holding, obviously locking the drive shaft nut. So I use these um, really tough um, uh, wire cutters. Um, you can use whatever. I find with wire cutters you can drag them through a bit easier. But yeah, and then remove the locking ring. Now... This is a 36 mil socket. Um, I'm using a, th a three quarter socket with a half inch to three quarter adapter on my gun. Um, obviously gun's easier because it rattles it undone really quickly. You don't have to hold the hub to bar it undone or anything, but obviously it's just easier with an air gun. But you can undo it with a bar if need be. Now I'm going to take a soft hammer now and I'm going to knock the drive shaft loose. So as you can see it bouncing there now, it's nice and loose in the hub. Once we unbolt the hub we need it to be nice and loose otherwise it's going to make it really awkward to get the hub off. So make sure you push that back first and then again remove the washer. Um, it's a bit awkward once you've tapped the shaft it kind of jumps out by itself sometimes it makes it a bit easier than trying to get it out. But now this is a T50 Torx and what we've got to do is remove the hub bolts. So basically if you look through these five holes you will see five Torx bolts. Now they all line up at the same time so turn the hub till you can see the bolt through one hole and then obviously insert the Torx socket. Now it needs to be a long Torx socket obviously to get through the hole. A short will not go on it. The socket itself will not fit in the hole. So make sure you get a long one and then just a 3-8 wobble headed bar and undo them. Now 
this one there, as you can see, was a little bit, he weren't sitting in nice, so I just give him a little tap just to make sure he was home. Last thing you want to do is round one of these bolts because uh, you just can't get to it. So, yeah, we're going to crack them all off. And, uh, yeah, I always like to crack them all off with a bar rather than a gun because if you don't get them seated properly, the actual torque socket seated properly, they round really easily. So, yeah, just make sure that it's uh, nice in there, nice and firm, and then just crack them off with a bar, and then you can take your gun, your impact gun or whatever, and undo it then. But yeah, always, oh, I, you know, always uh, if it's a, something like this, always loosen it with a bar first. So now I'm going to take my impact gun and just wind them out. Um, I like to take the bolts completely out of the hole just so I know where they all are so they are a bit awkward but uh, if you just hold the weight on them and you can get them out no problem so that's what I did here just to take all the take them out As you can see, they can be a little bit fiddly. Right, and that's the last one. So once you've got all them out now, the next thing we're going to do is remove the actual disc to wheel bearing bolts. So I'm going to use an impact gun here on these because they're just standard 13 mil head bolts. So just wind all five of them out. You can do this after, but when it's on there, I just find it a bit easier. So it doesn't, it's not, you don't have to undo these, but you're, well, you have to take one out to get the puller in there. But yeah, so just take these out and then we can use a bolt then to pull them out i'll show that next now this is the magic trick so what we're going to do we're going to take an m10 by 1.5 mil threaded bolt and what we're going to do is we're going to thread it into one of the holes that we took the dick disc locking bolt now the not one of the holes with the torx bolts one of the holes with the 13 mil headed bolts now what that's going to do is that thread inside the disc you're going to thread it through the disc and it's going to pop out the other side now where i'm touching here with a screwdriver you want it to hit that metal to pull the bearing away from the hub, from the actual hub itself or the strut as you, as you might want to call it but you'll see now as i'm winding it in now obviously you don't want to wind it where the hub bolts to the strut you want to or the wheel bearing bolts to the hub you want to wind it through the disc so what it's going to do what it's going to do now is when that bolt hits the strut it's going to pull the bearing by obviously winding through the disc away and as you can see I've just got my gun on here and I'm just winding it gently a little bit at a time and you can see a nice little gap forming and then all of a sudden it'll just drop out there you go and that's the bearing removed um, you can just hit the disc till it comes off but the problem is then it can jump off and damage threads and bits and bobs where with this is a bit more controlled you know um, now, as you can see, as I said earlier, my drive shaft's a little bit tight, so I just give it a tap, and there it is. That's the hub assembly and wheel bearing removed. Now, something just to point out, obviously the drive shaft does sit in here loose. Now, just on the this, obviously, surface here, if you look just to the right, you'll see a wire and the ABS sensor. Now, you've got to be very careful not to damage, because as you can see, that little black tip sticking out, if you damage that, that's your ABS sensor. So, And then see this little black ring on the back of the wheel bearing? You've also got to make sure you don't damage that either, because that's like a, it's like a plastic ring with magnets in it, and obviously, if you... Uh, damage that at all you're going to have abs faults so you just be careful of them two things um obviously while you're cleaning everything up so i'm going to lay this on a block of wood now and i'm going to knock the basically the disc 
off the wheel bearing. Now you've got to make sure that the wheel bearing is the right place. You'll see what I mean in a second. Um, see the wheel bearing turns and obviously it's got to sit between the gaps in the disc. So I'm just going to make sure that's lined up and obviously tap the disc down. Um, make sure you, if you put on a block of wood like I did, make sure there's no debris or nothing because the last thing you want is anything hitting that ABS ring. So yeah. So there's the ABS, obviously you can see the surface there where it actually sits in the housing. So we've got to clean this surface up best we can. And obviously the ABS ring, we've got to make sure it's nice and clean as well. And obviously where the disc mounts to the hub, we got to, or the flange itself, we've got to clean. So I do this in three ways. First, obviously I use a whizzer, then I use a scraper, and then I'll use a wire brush. Um... The whizzer just takes the big lumps off. The scraper is to get in the corners and then I'll just clean it up with a bit of emery tape. Um, these bearings aren't cheap. <laughs> I did price them up. I did debate changing them at the same time. But yeah, for nearly £250 for two bearings, it wasn't. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them. So they're going back on in my case. So yeah, just make sure everything's nice and clean. You want to clean up where the disc sits. Also where the hub bolts back in to the strut or where the bearing bolts back into the hub, which, whichever way you'd like to call it. And yeah, so we're just going to make sure everything's nice and clean and start reassembling. So obviously there's that ABS sensor I told you about again in the top right hand corner. So like I said, you just want to make sure you don't damage that plastic at all on that sensor because it needs to get a good signal for the pickup otherwise you will get abs faults so i'm just going to clean it out with a bit of emery tape and a bit of rag and away to go now i'm going to clean the flange surface off with my whizzer just to make sure it's nice and nice and polished again just a wipe off make sure there's nothing in the way make sure them two surfaces meet flat otherwise it's going to give you problems you want to you want to make sure you your hub is true so make sure it's nice and clean obviously the surface now i'm just pointing out here some of the positions where you can wind that bolt to pull the hub off so say it was tight and one bolt wasn't enough you could put two bolts and yeah i very much doubt it but as you can see there's plenty of uh, cast there to do that so yeah so clean my disc off now um obviously most discs come with surface oil so it's best to give them a good brake clean and just wipe off the excess amount of oil um, it doesn't have to be perfect it will burn off on road test but there's nothing worse than uh, pulling up after you've road tested a vehicle after fitting brakes and there's smoke coming off the front brakes it happens all the time but yeah it's always best to clean the worst off with a bit of brake clean so i always do that now obviously i want i want to locate the hub, the wheel bearing and hub to the disc so what i'm going to do here now is just put a piece of wood with a gap so that i can drop the hub into place um and then there she goes so like you say make sure it's all nice and clean i can't stress how straight this has to be because obviously the last thing you want is a bit of dirt or a bit of rust getting between these surfaces it'll cause you a lot of trouble so here's my bolts um, i'm going to apply loctite to them now these are stretch bolts um this van is uh, this van is on 60 no fifty five thousand miles so i know that these discs have never been done before so i'm comfortable reusing these bolts a second time now if it was the third time i don't think i would chance it but i'm pretty confident that they're okay to use so um, it's up to you really the procedure tells you to replace them but i i'm happy to use them so i'm just going to wind them down with my gun for now to locate it but we're going to have to tighten these and there is a procedure for that so we're going to do that when it's all assembled and we can hold it firmly to tighten them so i'm just going to wind them down don't tighten them too much i think it's 30 newton meters is a first stage so obviously you don't want to go too much but what i'll do is just wind them and then back them off a bit so yeah so now what we're going to do is obviously i'm going to make sure again like everything make sure the surface where it sits into the hub or the strut is nice and clean um, again last thing you want is something a little bit of uh, dirt there holding it up so these are the mount bolts now obviously it's got a tapered end on it so i'm going to put a bit of loctite but obviously not on the end just a little bit up the thread um, 
and then yeah i'm going to put a bit of loctite on them ready for when i put the hub back on so here's my hub we're going to locate the drive shaft obviously turn it till it lock goes into the splines and there you go there you can see in the center there the drive shafts come through and then i can line the hub up with the hole and i can look through that hole on that i took them torx bolts out of and i can line the hole up with the, ho the hole on the wheel bearing with the hole on the hub it's a bit difficult to show you on camera but you'll get the gist of it you know if it's not straight you won't get your bolt in so there it is there once you've got it lined up you can just wind your bolts in now i believe these hubs uh, will go on on any position there isn't any particular position there's no need to mark up where it came off or anything um, i just held them up straight to it and they went straight on so there's no uh, no worries there Now obviously you don't want to wind one bolt all the way in in one go otherwise it could twist the hub so what i'm going to do is just do them in a bit of a star pattern and i'm going to do a little bit at a time so i'm going to do just wind the top one here a little bit so it starts pulling down you'll see the hub pull down uh, pull a bit and then what i'm going to do is do one of the bottom ones then and wind it till it pulls in a bit and then go back up the top and wind that one a bit more till it pulls tight and then i'll go around them all in a bit of a star pattern then to make sure they're all wound in but uh, there's nothing worse if you wind one all the way down tight you'll struggle to get the hub in straight so once you've done this just stick your head behind the disc and look down at the hub and make sure she's seated tidy um, you can see it quite obviously so easy so i'm going to talk these up now Again, all the torque settings are in the description, guys. So just go on to the description to take a look, and I'll put the, I'll type everything up in there for you, so you can have a bit, have a copy of it. Now, if you're not talking them, it's not a really high torque. Um, I believe it's about 50 newton meters i think it's 53 i think it is so it's nothing too uh, mental so that's them done now i'm going to move on to the hub bolts now the hub the disc to wheel bearing bolts here the 13 mil head bolts um they are 30 newton meters and then they're actually an angle so what we'll have to do is we'll just Nip, nip them all down at 30 newton meters and then we'll have to give them an angle degree so what i use then is tipex and just mark them obviously where the where the angle um i believe it's 90 degrees again it's in the comments so take a look in there guys for all the information um so what i'll do is there you go i've gone round them all and then just tipex them straight up and then at 90 degrees which is quite simple really so i'm not gonna spend too much time showing this i'll just skip this so straight up and then straight to the right so basically just line the marks up it's that simple now obviously i need to stop my hub turning uh, if i had someone with me i could assemble a caliper and get them to put their foot on the brake but i haven't got that so i'm just going to put a bar in and then i'm going to turn it 90 degrees now i'm going to be honest with you guys i don't usually do this but i actually broke my socket doing this um, not on this side when i did the next size i broke my socket so this is a 3 8 socket and a 3 8 bar just showing you how easy these are to turn 30 newton meters and 90 degrees isn't a lot so i actually broke my socket so when i did the other side i used a half inch um, socket and bar i think on my re my recommendation would be to use a half inch not a three eight like i am here because i actually broke this socket so it's a good job it's a snap on because uh, i'll be um seeing my local dealer when he comes around next week and uh, getting that replaced hopefully you won't see this video <laughs> right so that's nice and tight now i know it's right so i can uh, assemble the dry shaft so there's the washer and the nut uh once again it's a tightening torque on these so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to wind it down with my gun and what i like to do is wind them all the way down and just 
back him off a little bit. So um, I like to finish it with the torque wrench. So as you can see, I'm just going to back him off a touch. I don't want it tight because I want to torque it. So the first torque here is 250 newton meters. So I'm going to give that a torque. And once we've done that, then we'll get the big torque wrench and it goes up to 500 newton meters in, guys. Um, I know that's a lot and I know a lot of people don't have. Oh, I better mention um, it says in the in the procedure that you should spin the hub five times between torques. It actually says to do it before, after the 250 and it even says to do it after the 500. But just so you know, so this is my big torque wrench. This is set 500 newton meters. Um, if you don't have a big torque wrench, I've always done it with a bar. Is obviously you can see here. I'm I'm on a ramp in a friend's garage, so I had all this available to me. Um, I don't have my own big torque wrench, so if it had been me, I would have just got a scaffold tube and a half a three three quarter bar, and I would have just give it a good nip. But you know, it's up to yourself. This is the procedure. This is how they had recommend you do it. So this is the way I have to tell you. So, but yeah. So what we're going to do now is put we've put the lock tab back on. Obviously, it goes on in various positions. Just turn it until it lines up and then bend your split pin over. And that's that's set. Lovely. Right. And that's the hub back assembled. Wasn't so bad, was it? So, right. So now we're going to put the brakes back together. So I always clean my carriers up. Um, I know obviously there was nothing wrong with my brakes um, I always give them a good wire brush and then what I do is I'll actually remove the clips and give it a really good wire brush under the clips um, here's my carrier bolts so again Loctite on the carrier bolts um, standard stuff guys never put carrier bolts in without Loctite um, they got them you got them it's probably the most important two bolts on the whole vehicle so good nip with a bar um, yeah they're, there is a torque setting, but I don't know it. I will put it in the description, guys. I've got all the torque settings. So I'll put them in there for you if you want to torque it. But I always tighten them with a bar. And there's our pads now. We'll just drop our pads in. Obviously, I've cleaned my carrier so they're nice and loose, which is perfect. I'm just going to pull my bottom slider out now, which is the one I unbolted. Clean off the grease and apply some new grease. Now, I use rubber grease. Um, it's up to you guys what you use just make sure obviously it's not petroleum based because we all know what petroleum based products does to rubber so I use red rubber grease it's nice and thick and uh, I find I find it pretty good so um, other people use different things you can buy specific greases but yeah so just grease both the sliders and then refit the caliper and there we go so there's our new bolt that come with my pads which is already loctited which is nice so i'll fit that on and we'll get that tightened up and we're pretty much there so there we are nice and tight with my 15 and 21 mil spanners and that's it back together now obviously you always give it a spin just to make sure it's all nice and tight and that's us now oh yeah last thing last thing is the obviously the new wire um, for the brake pads so just push him into the pads obviously put him back into where the nipple is and then just plug him in uh, quite quite easy this one so there's nothing to worry about there and that's us nice and straight now I'm not going to show you how to put a wheel on I uh, I think you guys can figure that one out so yeah thanks for watching guys sorry it was such a long video but I felt we needed to show you guys right through and uh, yeah please like and subscribe subscribe to my channel guys i'm you know i'm pretty new at this and i, I really want to get it out there so yeah any if you have any advice or if anything you'd like to see in the future please let me know and uh, yeah i'll try and help you guys out as much as i can so have a good day guys thanks